Hello! It is finally happening. My level 2 launch is happening and we are one week out and let's see how we're preparing this rocket. This is my MadCow DX3, a cardboard rocket with a 38mm motor mount. It is 67 and a half inches long and weighs 5 pounds and 2 ounces. This rocket is set up in a dual deployment configuration. I have a 30 foot streamer as a drogue and a 7 foot parachute as a main. Each secured with a 30 foot shock cord. Let's take a look at the lower portion of the rocket and make sure it's ready for flight. Now let's take a look at the rear of the rocket. You can see we have an aero pack retainer. On the back side we have our ring secured in place. We have a good fillet on the rear centering ring. Good fillets attaching the motor mount and the epoxy is holding the motor retainer in place. No cracks, nothing's looking damaged there. We have our rail buttons and they are firmly secured. Let's take a quick look at the fins. Our fins are in good shape. Make sure they are nice and secured. That's all looking good. Now, let's pull out our shock cord. Take a look at the inside and make sure everything looks good. Poxy fillets are looking clean as they should be. And the shock cord is securely attached to an eye bolt. The eye bolt looks secured. Make sure that is nice and firmly secured in place. Now I run my hands over the shock cord to make sure we don't have any frays or cuts burns, nothing that will weaken the shock cord. It brings me up to my swivel where I've got a soft link. Make sure that is secured. Make sure my swivel is free. And that is looking good. We have my streamer, which is packed as it should be. And then we have the Kevlar pouch for the radio tracker that I used to locate this rocket. And that is secured in the soft link as it should be. So that's looking good. Now let's continue down the shock cord. shock cord looks great. We have the soft link that connects it to the eye bolt on the electronics bay. So the bottom half of the rocket is looking good. Okay let's take a look at the forward section of my rocket. We'll start by removing the rivets holding my electronics bay in place. and then it just slides out. We'll take a look at the electronics bay a little later. Now let's take a look at the forward section with the nose cone. We'll just slide the nose cone out. It is a nice snug fit as it should be, which is accomplished by using a little bit of blue painter's tape. Now let's verify my shock cord is attached. You can see I drilled two holes in the bottom of the nose cone to secure the shock cord, it's more robust than trusting the molded in little loop. And then let's just trace out the shock cord, make sure we are nice and secure, no cuts. Okay, and let's pull the parachute out. So I have my seven foot rocket band parachute inside of one of their deployment bags. Tracing the shock cord, no cuts, no damage. The swivel is free. Trace it the shock core. And we have the soft shackle that attaches to the electronics bay. That's all looking good. Now let's take a look at the parachute. Pull it out. 
we have our deployment bag. It's attached with a tether. Let's make sure the tether is secured to the deployment bag, and it is. No damage to the tether. And let's open this up. And the tether is attached to the top of the parachute, just as it should be. Crowd lines and make sure they are not tangled. And they are not tangled. Zigzag these back in. go and the end of the parachute risers are secured with a soft link and that soft link is secured and that's going to my swivel which is free and attached so I will just roll this back up and let's stuff it back into the deployment bag and the parachute is ready to go. Now we can take a look at my electronics bay. I have two different charge wells on each side for a primary and redundant charge for my main and drogue. I've got eye bolts for each of my attachments. For my shock cords, I have two quarter 20 rods going through the electronics bay securing everything in place. I have pass-throughs on both sides that are secured for passing my e-matches through. Now that we have our electronics bay open, let's take a look at what we have. My electronics bay consists of an egg timer proton, an egg timer Wi-Fi switch, and a battery. If you notice, these battery connectors do not match, and that is because when I made this harness, I was initially planning on using a separate battery, uh, a smaller one, but it ran out of uh, energy too quickly, and so I had to upgrade to the larger battery. Um, and so that's why we have the mismatch, and to get around that until I make a new harness, I will be using this adapter to go from Dean's to the XC30. Let's go ahead and power this up and look at the configuration. Let's test the Wi-Fi switch is functioning. If you notice, when I plug in the power, the on light for the Wi-Fi switch is turning on immediately, indicating that its output is high when powered on. And if I put a multimeter on here, we can see that on the output, we are sitting at 7.75 volts. So, that's not good. We gotta figure this out. But that is why you pre-flight. Okay, so when I disconnect it from the proton, when I apply power, the LED is off. Now if I can reconnect, okay. So the Wi-Fi switch is working as it should. I enabled it, the light comes on, and then if I disable... the light turns off. And if I check it with a multimeter, then... we are showing millivolts. So, that is working as it should. So, we must have a short on the proton side. Yes. And we do. Okay, let's go find 
Find the short, shall we? on the proton. That's not shorted. Do I just get rid of it? Because the proton, unless it's armed, disconnects power to the pyro. Meets all the Tripoli requirements. Really don't need the Wi Fi switch. I installed it before learning about the integrated switches and the fact that it's not needed with the Proton. It would simplify things. I could get rid of the adapter. We can just fix this up. Interesting. Let's do that. And now I'm back after modifying the wiring harness for the Proton. Let's go ahead and get it installed back on the sled. So now I have the proton turned on, I will use a 1 ohm resistor across the different channels and verify that they are reading appropriate. So I have it plugged into channel 6 and channel status goes to on when I refresh the page, that is correct. If I go to channel 4, refresh the page, channel status is on, that's good. If I go to channel 3, We are good. And if I go to channel one, refresh, and it says on. So the proton is recognizing continuity correctly. The channels appear to be functioning as they should. Um, I've done uh, several ground tests with this, so I am confident we will work just fine. Okay, let's finish prepping the forward section of the rocket. I will go ahead and reinsert the electronics bay that we have ready to go. Uh, the battery is charged when we get to the field. I will add the e-matches and the black powder and we will be ready to go. But until then, we'll go ahead and reassemble everything. I'm not going to uh, attach my soft links here because I will have to undo them at the field. But I will align my keying marks that I've made with Sharpie so that I align my rivet holes. I will go ahead and use some blue painter's tape and we will create little bundles and use just a small piece of tape to hold them together. Now I will 
take my parachute and we will just slide that in. And now the forward section of the rocket is ready to go. Now let's finish packing the lower section of the rocket. I'll start by validating that my tracker is functional and turn on a radio. And if you can hear that rhythmic pattern, and if you can see the bar on the radio, you will see that the tracker is functioning. So the tracker is working, so I will remove the battery and place the tracker back in its protective case. So that is functioning. We will now proceed back to the shock core and do more of the Z folds. Now I will tighten up my streamer. Stuff the tracker and the streamer. Into the body. And we'll do a few more Z folds. And I won't attach the shock cord yet. I will wait until we get to the field and get the black powder charges in place. And now let's slide the forward section into the rear section of the rocket. And we are pre-flighted and ready to go to the field. And that's how I pre-flight my rocket before I fly. If you have any suggestions, tips, tricks that you've learned along the way, feel free to share them in the comments below. Until then, thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.